We're joining you today from Victoria's Stencil and Country Shop in Brookfield. Now, many of us may think of stenciling as one of the new offsprings of country decor, something you've given thought to trying or have recently done for your first time. Well, chances are most of us go way back with stenciling without even knowing it. Remember those paper-cut alphabet stencils when you were a kid? They came with pencil boxes or maybe writing tablets. Part of the excitement of stenciling is in their simplicity of use and the remarkable results. Well, if you're interested in stenciling, Victoria's is the place to see. You'll find more stencils here than anywhere in the Midwest. Today we'll see a stenciling demonstration, find out about custom cut stencils, classes, and supplies. Let's go inside. Here we are in one of the showrooms at Victoria's, and I'd like to introduce you to the owner of Victoria's. This is Sandy Barker. Thanks for inviting us here today, Sandy. Welcome. Now, I had the chance as I was coming in here to go through another of your showrooms that has mm -hmm. all of your stencils, and I am amazed at all the different patterns that are available yeah. today. Now, we'll be talking about stenciling more later on in the show, but first of all, why don't you tell us what we have here? Be glad to. We have some wonderful ideas for country decorating, and they help to incorporate stenciling, whether it be in furnishings or window treatments, floor coverings, country accents. We have a little bit of something for everybody, so there's a wonderful uh, variety of product here to look at. Let's start with what we're sitting at, and this is a wonderful mm -hmm. harvest table. It's a drop leaf harvest table. It's functional as well as decorative, can fit in a multitude of places. It's a beautiful piece. You could have it stained like this, you could paint it, uh, you could even order it unfinished and do anything you wanted to it, including stenciling, of course. Great. And uh, let's see some of the other. You know, I was noticing that you have uh, different color combinations here. Is that important in our country decorating? Well, we seem to, to see three specific trends that are happening in color selections and one of them is a mauve and blue like what we have okay, here right here. these types of items uh, the other is a, a burgundy and wine combination and the third is more of a, a green and peach kind of what's next to you that that big mm -hmm. basket there the yeah I want to make sure everyone Isn't sees this this is yeah. a nice combination so this is uh, the kind of thing that's popular these mm -hmm. days in country decorating primarily those three color combinations and within those of course you can incorporate just a little bit or a lot whether your home is country or not and that's the important thing to know you can get the feel and the uh, relaxed um, environment of a country home without having a log cabin to live in uh -huh. <laughs> what is the key to country decorating and doing it with taste I think country decorating has a lot to do with selection. You can pick just a little bit from a lot of things and just warm up a room. That's really what country decorating is all about. Uh, you want it to be something that people go in and relax and have a good time in your home. And you too, at the end of a long day, you can go mm -hmm. home and just relax in your home. For example, behind you we have this wrought iron lamp with a cut and pierce lampshade on it. Absolutely beautiful piece. And that's something you can just add to a corner of a room to help light it up a little bit. And it's a nice touch. Um, anything like these, these baskets here are absolutely beautiful. You can get them in all different colors so a little bit uh, to help tie the room together That's and really would we stencil something like this you sure could uh -huh. on the handle on the slats anything you wanted this little candle mat in here oh. is also available on stencil and uh, you can do it to tie in with your own color combinations Tinware is a great and very inexpensive way to decorate your home. Everything from uh, tin chandeliers to uh, little sillless lights that you put in your windows that are real popular to do right now are available in tinware. So those and are some wonderful accessories. Can you stencil this? Sure, sure can. Great. And we'll see the technique later on how to uh, stencil on absolutely all surfaces. Mm -hmm. We like to think that we can cover you from, from the top of the room to the bottom of the room. Stenciling anywhere you want and we can take care of you in furnishings and window treatments and rugs and accessories, table linens, all the way to to bottom. We have a good example here of how to take care of the bottom, and that's the floor coverings. Here we have, this is an unfinished, meaning unstenciled, um, oval rug. Our rugs are available, though, in any sizes, all the way up to 12 by 12 area rug. You can order in this material, which is very easy to stencil on, or a lot of different color selections. Heart-shaped rugs, oval rugs, uh, rectangular rugs, all, all shapes and sizes are available for people. So there's a lot that you can take care of from the ground on up. Now, obviously, we're being joined here today by a birthday girl. <laughs> Could you tell us about yeah, this? Isn't she great? Yeah, she's, she's terrific. Great. She's one of my personal favorites. Yeah. Um, this is one of the dolls from the Lizzie High doll collection. And she's one of our most popular items that we have in the shop. And something people come from all over to get from us because we do have a wonderful selection. Lizzie High was actually a family member of one of the founders of the company. And they've named each one of the dolls per a family member. And each one of them has a little story attached to her as to the setting that she's in. And they have. Uh, 
um, oh, probably over 60 dolls, and people actually collect them. So we have a list that people will get from us, check off the ones that they've gotten or that family members have gotten from them, and each season they'll come back and get another one for them so they know they're getting them just what they want, or maybe they're getting them just for themselves. Good. This is a perfect example of some of the charm of country decorating. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that we're ready now to get into more of the stenciling, and when we come back, we're going to show you how to do it. For over three decades, Toll Road Village has been the traditional source for the finest in home furnishing. Inside, you'll find a vast selection of timeless beauty and elegance for the living room, dining room, bedroom, family room, and study. Toll Road Village, your custom source for draperies, upholstery fabrics, floral accents, and fine accessories, with interior designers on staff to assist you. Old Toll Road Village, where... We're going to find out how we can do some of this stenciling. Go to it, Sandy. First, let me tell you all the supplies that you're going to need for stenciling. We're going to first show you how to stencil a room, and then we're going to show you how to stencil on fabric. This is a typical border pattern, and it hangs like this. And what this is right here is just a picture of the finished product in suggested colors. Inside here are the pieces of plastic that you need to comprise the complete pattern, and you choose whatever colors you'd like. It's wonderful. Um, a disassembled kit is right here, and we're going to show you how it's done. To start a room, you're going to start with your overlay mark top one, just as this piece of plastic is here with permanent magic marker. Secure it to paper first to practice. But when it does come time to starting a room, start in the least obvious corner of the room, which is usually above the door, and you're going to tape the stencil just flush from wall to ceiling. Secure it with masking tape like you see here. Taking your sponge, which is included in most kits, and if not, they're very inexpensive to purchase individually, you will fold your sponge in half once and then in half again, so all four corners are facing your palm. You're actually working with the center of your sponge. Taking your paint, you're going to put just a drop on the very tip of your sponge and use a strong circular motion on a brown paper bag to remove all the paint. This is the place where people make their biggest and really the only mistake you can make in stenciling, too much paint. If ever the paint bleeds under the stencil when you're practicing or on the wall, it's because of too much paint, okay? So you have taken a little bit of paint, you've rubbed it all out on your brown paper bag, now you're gonna use that same circular motion over the design. Now move to the next opening right away. You don't wanna stay too long on the one opening. A lot of people have the problem of staying on it too long, thinking they're not getting enough color through, and then they lift the overlay when they're done, and they see it got too dark on them, and they really wanted a more shaded effect. A lot more paint is going through these openings than you realize. When I remove this overlay, you'll see just how much color has already come through. Oh, yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, how shaded or how solid you want it is just a matter of personal taste. If you do want it more solid, you generally do not have to go back and take more paint. You can just go over the stencil again. And you'll see when I remove this overlay how much darker it's gotten than the rest just by going over it once yeah. more, okay? Now to continue your stenciling, you're going to lay your stencil down via, again, these permanent marker marks called register marks that are going to lay over the last bit of stenciling that you did. That laid over the last leaf that you stenciled and the rest of this, I call it cheater's proof. Uh -huh. You know, it, it just shows you how to continue the uh -huh. stenciling without a break in the pattern and without having to have to measure between repeats. It's one of the attributes of the better quality wall borders. So that's how you continue a room. We recommend you complete a whole wall or the whole room um, with one color, one sponge, and one overlay before you go on to the next. It's easier and you won't confuse your colors and that type of thing. But when you do go to a different color, generally you'll be going to a different overlay. This one will be marked top two, and it also has those register marks that will line up right over the previous color that you used. Just like that. Takes the mystery out of how do they get all those colors in there? <laughs> different pieces of plastic is how they do that. It's done with overlays. It couldn't be simpler. No, it looks really. <laughs> it looks like fun, too. People really think that they hand do it, that they hand, hand paint things, but uh -huh. they don't. They do it right with overlays. It's great. Generally, when you go to your next overlay, as I mentioned, is when you're going to use your next color. When you go to a new color, do go to a new sponge. In half, in half again, just a small amount of paint. Again, that's the biggest thing you have to watch for, is removing all that paint. Strong circular motion on a brown paper bag, and that same circular motion over the design. This paint is immediately dry, so there's no need to wait before going to your next overlay or your next color or repeating even the same overlay. I'll show you when I remove this. 
That doesn't great. bleed at all. That's all immediately oh, dry. Darn. Yeah, that's amazing. That's it. That's all it takes. Great. Now about oh every five to ten repeats, you're going to want to wash your stencil, and you'll do that by laying it flat on the bottom of a sink or tub, and with either an SOS pad or a soft scrub or Adobe pad, something like that. Wash over the painted surface, dry it off with paper toweling, and pick up where you left off. And your sponges you'll wash when you're totally done stenciling for the day with just a drop of dish detergent and water. It'll lather up. And even if it's stained by a previous color, you can reuse it on any color until it has a hole worn through it, and then you just pitch it. Great. Can I try it? Please do. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> it's been so hard for me to keep my fingers off of this. Let's see. This is our first one, top uh -huh. one. We've got our little magic marker thing. We go in quarters. I've been practicing this all day. <laughs> I, I, this is not my first time. No, there it is. A drop of paint. All right, this is the part where I'd want to smash it right up there. <laughs> Most people think, would. They think, it's, yeah. well, it's like a roller in a, in a house yeah. paint. You want to mm -hmm. put it right on. OK, now I want a real light shadow here. So I just circular. This is great. And Looks then, good. OK. I'm doing great. Oh. <laughs> Now, can we, is there any problem with this paint on the wall if we want to wash it after it's on? No, is it, not is it, at all. It's permanent. Yes, you can okay. wash the walls and the paint won't bleed. Even have it in a bathroom where it would be real steamy okay. on a semi-gloss right. wall. There's no problem there. And all you have to do to get rid of it is repaint, which is the glory of it all. When it's time to redecorate, you just go over it with paint ah. and it goes right away. So, and then you can start over again. There, I had my fun. Great, let's now, remove this and see here. Hey, I wonderful. think I'm hooked. I think I'm hooked. <laughs> now, what do you have to do differently for fabric? Is it the same or is it different? It is different. It is different in that you need to prep your materials. And what you need to do is select whatever it is you're going to stencil. Right here we have a hand towel. And what you need to do is pre-wash your material to get out any sizing or anything like that. Iron it and then you're going to stencil it. And you're going to stencil it with a multitude of different paints. You can select from a whole bunch of different ones that we have here. Secure the fabric to the tabletop and then the stencil to the fabric. That's the important thing to remember there. You want to keep your fabric as taut as possible. And we're going to work with the same colors. Okay. And the, the, the basic technique is the same. But once you're done stenciling, you need to do a little something special to the fabric that we're going to cover next. But uh, we're going to show a slightly different technique on the fabric, too. The majority of the time, you can use the same technique that we showed up here, the circular. But there are certain instances where you need to use more of a, a rocking or a pivoting mm -hmm. motion, as I'm doing now, over the stencil. Um, sometimes it's because it's an enamel wall, and enamel walls don't absorb paint, so you need to use more of a layering technique, which is what this rocking or pivoting motion is. In this instance, it's because you don't want the fabric to kick up from under the stencil. Mm -hmm. You want to keep the fabric nice and flat. So depending on the cutouts of the design, sometimes you can use circular on the fabric. Other times, though, you may find that you need to use more of this type of a motion on it. What's important to remember, though, about stenciling on fabric is that once you are done stenciling, you need to heat set it, or else it'll just all wash out. Oh. And a lot of people have had a lot of heartache because they didn't know to do that. You need to lay the fabric flat and say, let it rest for about a day so that it really permeates. The paint has really permeated the material. And then iron over it on a hot, dry iron, no steam, and with a thin piece of press cloth between the stenciled item and the iron, iron over it a few times, and that makes it permanent so it won't oh, ever wash out. You could wash it just oh, as you normally okay. would, and it's not going to fade. It's not going to, to wash away. It's going to be permanent for you. Now, why do you iron it first? to get out any wrinkles so it lays oh, nice okay. and flat. Right. And if you didn't, you might, you might be kind of bunchy. Uh -huh. It's a bit of a challenge maybe if you have permanently creased uh, curtains like Priscilla's or something that have a lot of folds in them naturally. But if you can, get your material as flat as possible. The ideal fabric is going to be cotton or muslin or something on, on that note where uh, it has good absorbency rate and it, yet it's very durable and you can mm -hmm. use it in a multiple of rooms. And this is different paint for fabric than it is for walls? Yeah, you can okay. use all of our acrylics, but you can, some of them you have to add what's called a fabric textile medium to and what that is is an item added to the paint so that they are heat settable so they do become permanent otherwise they would wash out but there are paints specifically made for fabrics which are absolutely wonderful they're like inks almost instead of the acrylic so mm -hmm. there's a lot to choose from anything you'd want in colors is there and you said that we could uh, paint over this and it's pretty easy to cover yes the most it would take would be two rollerings you would go mm. around once with the roller and then maybe a second time and then you'd be set and you're you're ready to repaint it doesn't mm -hmm. take any prepping or any priming or anything like that it's mm -hmm. really easy to work with yes. so in case you put a pattern on the wall and decide 
I'm going to change that color and, right. and do it again. I see. Or if you oh, really make a big mistake and it really, really bleeds under the stencil, don't fear. Uh -huh. Just wipe off the extra paint, paint it out with your background wall paint, and start again. Wonderful. Well, yeah. uh, uh, this is great. It's so easy. <laughs> it is. And it looks, how long would it take to do a room, would you say? An average, average size yeah. room, about a 12 by 12, 10 by 12, a two color border around the top of a room for a novice would be maybe four hours. Okay, so that's something so, like this. Yes. Then. Yeah, for a four novice, hours. even before, get all the furniture in the middle of the room, get the kids to the neighbors, get the dog <laughs> in the yard, take the phone off the hook, and be uninterrupted. And yeah, you can get the whole room done in just about four hours so people know they don't have to do something a month in advance. There are people mm -hmm. coming in three days before a holiday and still buying a stencil with company coming over in just a couple of days because it is so neat and clean and easy to do. So yeah. they're realizing oh, that now and, and it more looks and more. great. Well, we are going to see some other examples of some finished products when we come back with more of Simply Country. Welcome back to Simply Country. Now, Sandy, what different kinds of stencils do you have? Of wall borders, our major brands are Grissy, Tempo, Designer, Stenart, American Home, and several others. And of our fabric stencils, our crafting stencils, Quilting Creations is by far the brand we carry the most of. Sounds like you have a lot of stuff. Why don't we take a look at some of these patterns? Great. There's a lot of different styles to choose from. Stenciling has really bridged the gap of not just country, it goes into all decors, and this is a good representation of that. More of the French or English country is what's more popular right now, and this shows you with the ribbon and the floral combination. Mm -hmm. This looks all... Oh, here, let's take a look at this okay. one. I like this one. This is a very popular floral, probably our most popular floral, and that's because it's so versatile. It's used in kitchens and bedrooms and all sorts of rooms. It's your standard tulip, and it goes great with many, many different motifs. Are people putting these stencils up around the tops of walls, or where are they putting these? We recommend that the first place that you put them is around the top of the room, and generally no smaller than about four or five inches. That's important to remember, or else you're, all, those, all that effort will not be noticeable when you get down off the ladder, so it is important to remember that. All right, this looks like something a little different. Yeah. Yes, this too goes at the top of the room, but it goes specifically at the soffit. And a soffit in a kitchen is usually the most common place for that. This fits exactly into a 12-inch area. Oh. So it's specifically designed for that. All right. Neat design, isn't it? With yeah. the lettering too, I know. Welcome. Yeah. I like this one. It's nice and bright. And very, Bold. very, and it has depth to it because it has uh, some items in the foreground, some items in back, and this is a village scene, of course, and it's very popular in the front halls and in kitchens, and it just seems to have a very warm and welcoming feel, so right. it's very popular for that. And of course, as you can see, it's color on top of color, and that's due to the overlays. You can work with one overlay that does the background color and the next overlay that you use the other colors on. Mm -hmm. So and it we looks can, tough, but it isn't. We can choose our own colors, obviously, right. for this. We don't, right. just because this picture looks this color, we just choose for you our own. Choose whatever you want, right? You All choose right. for your own decor, bring in a swatch of maybe some fabric that you have in the room, uh, some, a drape panel or a family quilt, whatever it is you're working with. We have over 200 colors to choose from. And you from, will help so us decide we will help you. with our swatch. Most definitely. Wonderful. Glad okay. to. Mm -hmm. Now, this looks very different. It is. This is a Southwestern motif. Southwestern mm -hmm. has really gotten a resurgence. I think the great way to know when it's safe to go with any form of decorating is when you see it show up in upholstery. And Southwestern has been showing up in upholstery, so you know it's going to be around for a while, so it's safe to go ahead and stencil your room in a Southwestern. Western motif. Wonderful. Now, again, this looks like this is not a pineapple and it's not or just a tulip. Floral, or a right, cake. exactly. <laughs> Florals are by far the most popular, just as uh -huh. they are in anything. But yeah, it is nice to know that there are other alternatives. This is an Oriental scene, and again, it has a color on top of color, and it's absolutely a beautiful design. Actually, I think this too could be used in Southwestern because it does have that desert type look, that desert scene. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, there are obviously a lot of options. Yes. Now this looks different. This is. This is one of the newer concepts and something we've been getting a lot of people asking about, and that is corner patterns. Now, a corner pattern is fine, but you're going to want something to come off of that corner pattern. So we start with our initial border, which is this guy here, and then you can purchase separately this corner pattern that this will lead right into, so you'll have a cascading effect in the corner. And then, of course, you can reuse this corner pattern over a, a headboard or uh, maybe to frame a portrait that's on the wall. Oh. It's really very, very versatile. Okay. And we have a couple left here. Quickly, what is it? Sure. This is a juvenile pattern that's probably Cute. one of our most popular. Yeah, yeah, it's teddy bears. And of course, you can go with either pastels or primaries, which mm -hmm. seem to be the two alternatives people <laughs> go with when they're using juvenile patterns. But there are many, many more besides right. this. And this one, obviously, yeah, is different. This is what, is, what do you use this, this for? Looks, it doesn't look strange. I think, oh, this. what's that square of things cut out of it? Well, this is absolutely great. It's real conceptual, so I'm very fond of it because of that. This simulates wallpaper. Mm -hmm. This is a square of plastic in here that has this cut out. And say from chair rail on down, you would just move this square about with those register marks. It also has those permanent marker marks on it. And you would just stencil over it and continue to move it till you cover up the whole wall with it. And then this company also offers a companion border pattern that would use to cap off 
the chair rail. Wonderful. Isn't that neat? Well, let's take a look at some finished yes, patterns. Yes, And I want to ask you very quickly, is it uh, more economical to use stenciling oh. rather than wallpaper? Definitely. You can get an, a stencil on average is about $25. The paints are just a couple of dollars each and will last for five rooms or more. And, of course, it's very easy to get rid of, too. So that's really nice. You just need to repaint. And, of course, it's much cheaper to have a stencil made for you than if you had, say, wanted wallpaper made for you. Uh -huh. So the alternatives, the, the options are so much wider with stenciling than they are with papering. But stenciling also works well with papering, so you don't have to totally not wallpaper. Here we have great samples of some stenciling either on craft projects, gifts, or, or seasonal items that are very affordable. Here we have some welcome hearts on jute. We have the chalkboard, which is great for adults and kids projects. Um, this plaque here with the buck on it. Um, this hand towel is great with the Christmas stocking on it. And all these items are available here. And let me just show you quickly this, this Christmas apron. Right. I like this he guy. Stories, this yeah, stones. He's great. Here it comes. You can get it for anybody. <laughs> this is our Christmas goose. But of course, it could be anything, have anything on it. We uh -huh. carry these canvas items here. These items, too, are available stenciled or unstenciled. Mm -hmm. You can get them the way they are. Wonderful. Obviously, all different kinds of things we can do with Most stenciling. Definitely. Thank you so much for inviting us here today, Sandy. Thank you for coming. Now, if you have any questions at all about stenciling, all you have to do is contact Victoria's. They give demonstrations constantly, and they do offer classes. And that's it for this episode. Next week, we'll be joining you from Old Toll Road Village, where we'll be taking a look at country home decorating. I'm Bonnie Montgomery. If it's country, you'll see it here on Simply Country. Interested in having your business featured on Simply Country or need more information on today's show? Call us at 785-1709. Simply Country is made possible by Craft Fair USA, Cudahy News and Hobby